Hi, I'm Daryl Bricker. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Ipsos Public Affairs, arguably the largest uh, polling organization in the world. So we know a little bit about the topic that we're going to be talking about today, which is polling for journalists. What you need to know about those polls that are increasingly crossing your desk. Uh, Today, if you're a journalist, you're working on a 24-hour news cycle, you're inundated by information that's coming in, you have to make fast decisions about what's going to be making it into your news broadcast that night or what's going to be making it into your newspaper. And when it comes to polls, sometimes it's pretty hard to tell what's good and what's not. Increasing number of methodologies from people that you may know, people that you may not know, there's some basic questions that you should be asking, and that's what we're going to be talking about in this series. Very basic, no BS bottom line questions that a journalist should be asking about any poll that comes in because you know what you have a right to know. Well, we've talked about the art of surveys which is really about questionnaire design. Let's talk a little bit about the science of surveys which is about sampling and weighting. So you want to go out and do a, pop, a survey of the general population in your country. Say you live in Smarty Land, this is what the, the population looks like. So you want to survey uh, Smarty Land, you stick your hand in, you take out what we call a sample because you don't have to interview every single person to get what the overall population is thinking. And what you find out is that the sample looks a little like this. So you have some pink ones, you have some yellow ones, you have some blue ones, you have some red ones, and you have some green ones. So we know based on a census of this population that's talking to every single one of these Smarties that you should have equal proportions of five groups and that's exactly what we have. But we have this and we know there isn't any orange ones in the population so we'll just feed our survey camera monkey over there and you can enjoy that. Don't say I don't do, ever do anything for you. Uh, so anyway if we have to adjust this uh, to make it look like the general population if say for example you've got too few green ones what would you do? Well you do what we call in the survey research business waiting. And I'll use this Lego to help represent what waiting looks like. So I know that this is the general population here and I know that this is the survey results that I have. And I take a look and I compare the general population and the survey population and I see that I don't have enough blue respondents. So what I do is I weight up the answers of the blue respondents and I have too many green respondents. So I'll weight down the responses of the green respondents. Then I have something that looks like the general population and we should be happy with that. Uh, but where do you run into problems when it comes to weighting? Well you run into problems when you do too much of that weighting. If you have to really weight it up or weight it down to make it look reflective of the general population then that probably isn't a very good survey sample and the survey company should reveal that to you. But you as a journalist should be asking how is the weighting done, how is the sampling done and what variables were used to do the weighting all questions that a good survey company should be able to tell you about and be prepared to disclose to you. Let's talk for a second about the margin of error. The margin of error is a measure of survey quality and it relates to probability statistics but what it tells you is the chance that the survey results that you have are not um, representative of the general population. So what um, we use to calculate that, we have a few props that we have, uh, survey you know, sample wheels or sliders uh, and uh, we all carry them as survey researchers, it's like our little nerd pack and we can calculate what a survey's margin of error is just by simply turning around the wheels or, or moving the sliders. Uh, very simple calculation, say for example if it was plus or minus 5% for your survey that meant if you had a binomial distribution which is the most conservative estimate of error 50% of the population thinks this, 50% of the population thinks that, then those results could be between 45 and 55. That's an acceptable range. But one time, and this is where the 19 times out of 20 comes in, one time, even if you did everything absolutely correctly, it's still going to be outside of that, uh, that margin of error. So you have to be careful for looking for what we call the rogue poll. So that's why comparing a few different surveys on the same subject probably gives you a better representation of what the, uh, of what the uh, real results are. But as a journalist, there's some very interesting questions that you can ask about sampling and weighting that uh, any survey company should be able to reveal to you and if they don't you should have problems with those surveys because you know what you have a right to know.